Yeah, I think the justification is that they have two goals and two tools, right? The goal is financial stability in the short run and price stability in the medium term. And so they can act in two directions at once, use their lender of last resort functions uh, to pre preserve financial stability, also lift its policy rate to keep inflation in check. So I think the, that's the argument that the central bank can try and walk and chew gum at the same time. It has two objectives and two tools to do that. So we do think they'll lift the policy rate by 25 basis points this week, but I think that me the message will be more dovish in the sense that uncertainty to the outlook ha has risen. Sure. So it's hard for them to give concrete guidance about what it may do going forward. Things will be much more data dependent, and data dependent also includes financial market dependence. So you hike, that's the, ha the hawkish side, but I think the message is uncertainty, move cautiously, that's the dovish side. So when you say that downside, has risk, downside risk has emerged for the first time, what do you mean by that? Well, we had, so we've had a recession in our baseline for quite some time now, but momentum in the economy has always been stronger, that we were seeing slowdowns in, say, housing and some parts of business spending, but it was narrow. And the labor market was strong, consumer spending was strong, so risks were really in the direction of an economy that wanted to keep going and keep expanding, and risks to the Fed policy path were to the upside. Now I think you can argue we've seen, we've already seen a tightening in bank lending standards before the recent events. Those are likely to tighten further. Credit growth is likely to slow further. Therefore, you have more balanced risks around the outlook. And should you get a sharper contraction in credit than we're expecting, that's where your downside risk would, would come from. So that's, were, that's what we mean by downside risk now emerging. You were early in the recession call. It, um, in the sense that you've always said maybe towards the back half of this year, a lot of people are coming around to that view. So again, why not cut here or at least pause? Well, because I, our thesis has been to get inflation down to 2%, you do need to correct some of those imbalances in, in the labor market. And, and that would mean something that looked like a traditional recession. So we think it's just the, the cost of trying to get price stability would involve a correction in the labor market. So if that was the goal, we felt history tells us more likely than not you end up with something that that looks like a recession so you wouldn't cut now just because you haven't made enough progress in bringing inflation down to two certainly with with balanced risks now and, and risk perhaps to the downside yes the transition from hikes to cuts may may come come sooner but i don't think that's baked in the cake either all right market is certainly heading in that direction uh, but we'll see how the the rest of these days play out with the banks and all the rest of it michael thanks for your time today it's good to see you again